What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video, we are jumping into Judgment Day's Death to the Mutants, issue number one of three. Another story brought to you by Kieran Gillen. This issue is going to be taking place during Judgment Day issue number two, leading up to where our celestial, our new god, is rising up, and it is now telling all of humanity they have 24 hours to prove their worth. If the Celestial decides to judge them poorly, all of humanity will be taken off the board. When it comes to this issue specifically, it is really focusing on the small details that are happening in the background. The details that are going to matter for what is yet to come. Now make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, you have liked this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, so when we open up with this issue, it is just really giving us a quick recap on everything that has been going on. Uranos had done all of his destruction on Mars. Jack of Knives had a failed attempt at taking out the Five, having failed taking out their resurrection protocol. Druig has called in the big guns. That is the Hex. These are six skyscraper war-like Eternals. Giant freaking Kaijus. Because Marvel absolutely loves Kaijus and they love attacking mutant kind. And so with the Hex continuing their siege, our Eternals that are in Lemuria, they are currently discussing what they are going to do. Of course, Icarus, he is ready to jump into the fray, believing that there is an injustice happening and they need to go stop it. Individuals like Faustos, they do have concern if Druig is releasing the devil himself. The one known as Uranos the Undying. What extent will he not go to? This is when Ajax and Cersei, they bring their plan. The plan to create a new god. One that they program. One that will end this war. The truth is, this is a pretty good plan. It is really the best plan that they currently have. There is only one issue. Fostos has already seen these plans. In fact, he let them know that those plans would eventually lead to a war. Because what they had in mind, they had to kidnap Mr. Sinister. This war just conveniently happened. If this war had not broken out, this war would have probably started anyway because of Cersei and Ajax. Because of their attempt to create this new god, they were going to do it regardless of the circumstances that are currently ongoing. And Ajax lets him know that regardless of the why I did this, right now it is the best defense if we are going to stop this war. And so as he agrees, the two of them, they head off to create the new god, the rest of our Eternals. They head off with Cersei to do a seance. Going into the very bowels of Lemuria, they need something from down there that is going to bring this celestial to life. And that is what brings us to the Deviant's most sacred and profound sites. A giant crater in the ground. Crow is granting them access already knowing that there are going to be many deviants that are not going to like this. Letting Eternals step foot in such a holy place to them. And he tells the Eternals, the second host of the Celestials had returned to Earth found them in their fullness of power. Crow was just young at the time, but he remembers all of it. This is where the first strike had been laid, and this is where they learned, with absolute certainty, that their gods did not love them. As our heroes descend down into this pit, Ajax using some of her theological technology, the deviants that had been killed, you could consider them shadows, not necessarily a ghost of the people or the deviants that had died down here. What they really are are shadows burnt into the very fabric of reality only being able to be possible because of the power of the Celestial's hate. But they get enough form to where Cersei is able to grab hold of one of them. She gathers whatever power it is that she is looking for. They gather eyewitness testimony to the nature of the Celestials. And bearing witness to this, Cersei has to ask herself two questions. Why would we make another god? And how could we not make one that is better? That is how cruel and unjust the Celestials can be, believing that even if they create one, more than likely is going to be better than the Celestials that have existed or do exist, making their way back up to the surface. 
Cersei and Thena, they take off. They head off to build their new Celestial. For Icarus, for Sprite, and for Kingo. It's time to smash some skulls. Before they do head off, Crow decides that he's going to interject a little bit. The truth is, you're free to go off, fight Druig, fight the Eternals on the front line. But he tells him to look around. That you will go off, you will be the hero. But the Deviants, this city, will pay the price. But what Crow is really proposing is to use a little bit of stealth. Something that Icarus has never been great at. Because if Deviants are going to get involved in this fight, he wants it to be because of their actions. They don't want to get blamed for the actions of Icarus and whatever it is they plan to do. And so he gets an idea. That's what takes him down to the subspace tunnels. Deep inside the machine, walking into this shadowed cave, looking for an old friend. This old friend just so happens to be Gilgamesh. And if there is anybody that is going to want to stop Druig, it is the Forgotten himself. Now this is when we head over to Olympia. In the War Room, Druig is currently watching as this siege unfolds. Right now, five of the six Hex are currently operational. One of them recently being taken down by Exodus. We saw that in Judgment Day issue number two. But that's not the only thing that is going on. There is still a siege happening on the psychic level. That is where Zurus comes into play. The psychic battle between Zurus and Charles Xavier. And this is a very unique battle. Because Charles Xavier, without question, he is the stronger one. He can deal a heck of a lot more damage. The only downside, they are made of flesh. Now, when it comes to Zurus, he may not necessarily be as strong as Charles Xavier, but he has the defense. He has the durability. They even give us an example that Charles Xavier, he's like an 80 carry. He does all the damage. Zurus, he's got all the hit points. He is the tank. But Zurus isn't trying to win this battle. He is simply keeping the heavy players at bay keeping them distracted while the Hex does their siege. But out of everything that we have learned, Druig has highly underestimated mutant kind. Picking us up in the exclusion, we have Kalos the Destroyer, the one of the Oceanic Watch. A very powerful individual, he is able to unfold into a Hydra pattern. And today, he is going to be tested. We have the Forgotten, Icarus, Kingo, and Sprite. They have come here to open up a gateway using the stealth suits of the Forgotten. They got as close as they possibly could. And while Icarus and the others are battling the Hydra, we have Sprite that is off to the side, manipulating the system and changing some things up. This is opening up Armory Access. Doing a hit and run mission, Icarus reaches out to Jean Grey, reaches out to all the X-Men, and lets them know that the way is open. That is when Druig and the others, they get the alert. There are intruders in the armory. With magic leading the way, they have infiltrated the armory. The armory is what fuels the Hex. This is where they get their power, their weapons, everything. And so if you can cut off the supply line, then you stop them from being any kind of real threat. And so with Druig sounding off the alarm, he knows that the Forgotten is here, putting everybody on standby, making sure that they cannot escape. Because Druig, he believes that they are trying to run. The truth is, they have some other plans. Before they get out of here, they have one more thing that they're gonna do. And this is where we see Icarus come up behind Zurus and he blows his brain straight into another dimension. See, this doesn't kill Zurus. His mind just has a missing connection, which means no human has to die, and he is completely taken off the battlefield. In a matter of minutes, the eternal siege against the X-Men has dropped, but Druig still has some hope. The Hex are running on fumes, but when the last one is resurrected, they believe that this is going to be the final blow that they need to take down Krakoa once and for all. Of course, Druig is going to be very disappointed, taking us to Avenger Mountain. We have Fostos who is finishing up on this new Celestial. As it comes to life, 
it speaks those words. What we saw at Judgment Day issue number two, humanity has 24 hours to justify themselves. But this also stopped the siege entirely. All of the Hex had been sent back home. And so now everybody is looking to Druig. He honestly has no idea what to do here. And so he puts everybody into a full retreat to work up their defenses and figure out what they're going to do next. But in small circles, some of the Eternals, they can't help themselves but think, what would Uranus do? Power is slipping away from Druig. People are seeing his weakness. And we could very likely in the future see a new Prime Eternal. The Devil himself could take the throne. With Gilgamesh and Icarus making their escape, he does leave a message on the wall as he burns it into the stone with his vision. It reads, Death to the Eternals. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. So what it really seems that Kieran Gillen has been doing is Judgment Day is going to be the series where the big things happen. We could say that X-Men Red, maybe Immortal X-Men might be an exception to that. But Death of the Mutants, it seems to be going back, letting us know what happened with different fronts. Because you have the Avengers, you have the Eternals, and then you have Mutants kind. Obviously, you can't tell all front stories within one comic book. And so Death to the Mutants is helping fill in all the blanks, everything that has been going on, what's happening with individual characters. Now, for those of you that have been wondering where Storm is, some have said that she's, she's currently on Wakanda helping out Black Panther, so on and so forth which is a possibility, but I don't know if the timelines actually match up. But you are going to be very much disappointed because we do not see Storm in this week's X-Men issues. And if you're wondering where Jean Grey is, you're going to want to check out my next video, which is the X-Men. That will be another tie-in showing us what the X-Men team has been up to. That issue actually interlocks with this one on a really good level. They're trying their best not to leave out any part of the story. This one was definitely not as groundbreaking, but it's laying the foundation for what is about to happen. Uranus the Undying is going to be Prime Eternal. That really seems to be like the inevitable direction that this is going. We don't really know the extent of Uranus's power. What we do know is that he wiped everybody on Arako. Not everybody, but everybody within a 50 mile radius. So it begs the question, could he kill the new god? Would the other Eternals try to release him? Make him Prime Eternal, remove the new Celestial, and then continue taking out excess deviation? Now we know that Eternals, they have principles. Theoretically, they shouldn't be able to hurt a Celestial. But if we have learned anything about the Undying, is that he does not play by the rules. You know, when I first read this issue, I was a little bit concerned that it was taking too much time up, trying to explain everything happening in between. Really, I was just more excited and anticipating us to see the new god in the aftermath of him trying to pass judgment. I'm sure Judgment Day issue number three is going to be covering everything that happens after that. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to get caught up on everything happening with Judgment Day, be sure sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on the entirety of this event in reading order. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. Now if you can't do that, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you like this video, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.